every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every year, a person dies in this world. The magnitude of that is that people die to the amount of 30 to 40 million people a year from the face of this earth. And if we go by statistics, that equals, they say, 10% of those people actually know Christ as their Lord and Savior. That means 27 to 36 million people a year die and go to hell. Now that is a tragedy. Our scripture this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 6. people of 
with unclean lips, mine eyes had seen the King, the Lord of hosts. He recognized his sin before God. We need a cleansing every day of our lives before we even start our day, before we go out into that world. We have a calling to go out into that world. Did you know that? Amen. Our calling is to go and tell. These people were looking for somebody to come and tell them something. They're scared out there. And rightly so, all the things that are going on. Amen. We live in here somewhat peaceful in Tennessee, but guess what? It's fall. We usually have those storms to pass through here, don't we? The rumbles and the clouds and the lightnings, but then there's occasionally those tornadoes come through too. So we're not left from it. There's as much hate out there in Clarksville as there is, is anywhere else. But our calling is to be a light to those out there. Amen. And before we can be a light, we have to be right before God. He, made his, he got himself right, and then the Lord talked to him. And then the Lord talked to him. And he says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. We'll now go over to Matthew 28. And I'll just remind you of the calling that we have. The calling we have comes from Jesus Christ himself to those of you that have accepted him as Lord. It says in 2 Corinthians 5.15, it says, And that he died for all, that they which live should not live, henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Jesus has given us a purpose. Our purpose every day is not to go to the grocery store and buy groceries. It's not to go get gasoline at the gas station or work in the garden or flower beds. These are things we do. Or go to work and make a living. Or write a book. Bake cookies. Our purpose is to go and tell the lost about it. A wonderful Savior that will save them from hell, fire, damnation. He says, oh, but He's not going to send us out without something. We got our hearts right before God. He says, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. That means we plug into His power. And then we go. When He sent His disciples out to this into the cruel world that they were living in. And, and folks, it ain't changed. It's just as bad back then when Jesus was walking the earth as it is now. We just see it in a different perspective. He sent them out and said, don't take any extra stuff with you. Don't take any extra shoes or clothing. Don't take any money. Don't take any food. You just go. And they went. And when they came back, the testimonies. We did all these things, Lord. We, we healed the sick. We cast out the demons. We led people to you, Lord. And it's because Christ was with them. Because he said there at the end, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I venture to say probably a lot of people missed out, Christians missed out on opportunities to share Christ this week. I shared a while back 
We have these wonderful things called smartphones. I guess I'm way back in the prehistoric times because I still got a good old-fashioned flip phone. Well, anyhow, how many, I mean, you don't have to raise your hand, but I know everybody here got at least one call this week trying to sell you a credit card or checking on your vehicle warranty or wanting to give you a better mortgage rate on your home. Just somebody sending you, calling you something with a bill of goods they wanted you to have and they wouldn't have themselves. Those are opportunities to share Christ. When we tell them just to delete us off their phone list, we have just missed an opportunity. We've missed an opportunity. Quite often, I've taken those opportunities, I've asked the person, I said, whoa, 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 slow down here now. Let me ask you a question before we get started here. And they'll say, what? I said, do you know Christ as your Lord and Savior? 90% of the time, I hear this wonderful click. My phone goes back to regular service and we're done. The thing of it is, I've left that person with a question that they're going to have to answer to one day. The other 10% of the time, that person says, excuse me, could you say that again? I said, do you know Christ as your Lord and Savior? I had a man in Texas that one time before we got done was weeping and saying, thank you for stopping me. Thank you for telling me about this. I've stepped away from church, and because of this time right now, my heart has changed. I need to go back to church. Pray for me. We prayed together, and I'm just thankful to God that He gave me that opportunity. Amen. We miss opportunity. I was on the street. How many times we go fill up the gas tank? Our purpose, again, our purpose is not to fill up the tank on the car or to go buy groceries, or to go shopping for the latest model or the latest fishing pole or rifle. Our purpose is to go and tell. And what better place than when we go out there and shop? These people already know us. Share Christ with those people. When you see them struggling, buy them a card at the store you're at and and tell them you're and, and right in there that you're praying for them and you love them and Jesus loves them too and then hand it to them sometimes hand it to their manager they get a bigger hoot out of that I guess we must be about the business of the Lord time is short there's coming a time when we won't be able to do this stuff anymore Tell you about a 12 year old one time. Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Joseph and Mary and them had been to almost home again, and they realized their son Jesus was not with them. So they had to go all the way back to try to find him. They had already searched everywhere, couldn't find him. And when they found him, they said, Son, why hast thou dealt with us, thus with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrow. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? At twelve years old, yes, Jesus is God, but he's also man. Twelve years old, he said, I must be about my father's business. And I, I pulled this because so often children are so quick to be able to sh willing to share with their friends an invitation to church. 
an invitation to a youth outing. And the adults, we've gotten to, I guess, proud of that. John chapter 9, verse 4. This is going to sound similar to the last verse. John chapter 9 and verse 4, it says, Jesus was talking to them, verse 3 and 4. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works that sent me while it is day, and the night cometh when no man can work. Today is the day, folks. Our time is getting short. There's coming a time when we'll not be able to do any more for the Lord. It'll be over with. When the trumpet sounds, it's done. Amen. We won't be able to raise, lead another person to Christ. Now, mind you, we can only lead them towards Christ. Andrew went to Peter one time and said, Come, I want to show you this man called Jesus. We should be doing the same thing. We can't have an attitude about this. We've left a lot of religiosity and enter into our lives to where we do what we think is good. But we do it by our standards of what we think is good. Everything that we do must be do it done as unto the Lord. While it is day, because the night comes when no man can work. He's talking about the end. Now who are we supposed to reach out to? Hmm. I'll just mention some names. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Mike Pence, Donald Trump. There's a lot of hatred going on in this country right now because of those four names. Yet, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus died for them just like He did for me. They were as fearfully and wonderfully made as I am. They are cherished as much by God as I am. And he died for them, just like he did for me. It's not up to me to judge people. There's but one righteous judge, and that's Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. My job is to go and tell. My job is to go out there and tell them about a Christ that died for them on the cross, was buried in a tomb, and three days later, became victorious over sin and death and walked among the people for 40 days before he ascended into heaven. And he promises one day, whoo, he's coming back to take me to heaven. A doctor was asked one time, he says, Doc, you're a Christian, right? And the doctor says, yeah. He says, well, what's heaven look like? He says, I can't tell you. I don't know. He says, well, then why would I want to believe in what you believe? He says, well, you know I've got a service dog out in the lobby there. He says, yes, let me show you something. He opened the door to the room they were in and did a little bit of a whistle. And that dog, the black lab, came crashing in on the doctor and just jumped up on him and was loving him. And he had the arms around that dog. And he got him back down, sent him back out the door. He says, 
I don't know what heaven looks like, nor does that dog know what this room looks like. But he knows his master. We know our master. And if that's all I get to see, then I'm good with that. But we're to take as many with us as we can while here on this earth. You got family, blood relatives that, that you really love, friends that are as close to some of those, neighbors, co-workers and bosses, strangers. These are the kind of people we, we need to be out witnessing for Christ to. I want you to think of one person right now that is really near and dear to your heart that you know without a doubt that they are not saved. Think on that name right now. Think on that name right now. Let it pierce your mind to where you won't forget that name over the next few days. And I'm going to challenge you to take one moment between now and the next time we meet and share Jesus with that person. And some will say, I might offend them and then I won't be in good relations with them. I told the pastor that I first got saved at the church in Spring Lake, North Carolina. I told him that and he says, so what do you want to do, Don? Love them to hell? We're to get busy. The time is now. We're called to go and tell. Every second somebody dies. Don't forget that. We're not guaranteed to make it out of this place today. We're to go without sin. We're to be intentional about our going. We're to be prayed up before we go. We're to go with purpose. We're to prepare ourselves before we go. And then we're to go as unto the Lord. You say, well, I don't know how to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone. Well, it's easy. We've got these neat little papers here at our church. Just like that. They fold up real nicely and they fit in your pocket. Those of you ladies, you can put them in your pocketbook or a little carry purse. But you can fold it in such a way that it comes to this one page and it says, Becoming a Christian. It's no shame to read this to somebody. It's not very many words. Becoming a Christian is as easy as knowing your ABCs. Admit to God that you're a sinner. And then it quotes Romans 3.23. Believe that Jesus Christ is God's Son and accept God's gift of forgiveness of sin. And then it quotes John 3.16. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And then it quotes Romans 9 or 10, 9, and 13. It takes all of about a minute to a minute and a half. You don't have to say anything. God's word says it will not return void. You have your phones, you can reach out to people and call them. The internet. If you're scared to share, there's those places like Facebook, Twitter, whatever them other things are, I don't know about because like I said, I have a flip phone. But on Facebook, you can share the gospel of Christ with people rather than sharing all that other stuff. I found it really incredible. I had over 2,000 friends when I first got on Facebook. And then I started, once I got off of the things of the world and started sharing the gospel of Christ. And now I've got 300 friends. Isn't that a miracle? But, again, those that were friends at first got the Word of God. And it's there. We cannot save anyone.
Make sure you understand that. You cannot save anyone. You don't have that kind of power. That power belongs to the one that died on the cross and rose again victorious over sin and death. He's the only one. He just calls us to be obedient and go and tell and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every second, someone dies. You say you believe in the cross of Christ. What are you going to do about it? He calls us to do for Him. There's a scripture this morning. I thought it's something this morning in Sunday school. It seemed like everything that I was going to preach on today was in that Sunday school class. And I'm going to leave you with this before we close. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You know what you're supposed to be doing now. You know that you're supposed to be out telling the world. You know that God has called you, Christian, to get out there and do this job. Now, to not do it, you know what that is. In Matthew 24, 42, this is the final warning. Jesus said, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord doth come or return. He could come now. He could come right now. And if he did, what could you lay at his feet? What witnesses would you lay at his feet? As once said, that 90% of the people that call themselves Christians have never shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with anyone in their lives. Don't be that person. If you're not a Christian here today, you can be before you leave here. It's like I said before, you just have to have the ABCs of knowing how to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's nothing good about what you're going to go to if you don't have Christ in your life. It says in God's Word that they, there's so much pain in hell that they're chewing on their tongues just to get a little bit of relief from the pain that they're suffering at the time. And that, folks, is for eternity. There's no in-between. There's no in-between heaven and hell. There's none. The time is now, folks. People out there are lost. They're scared. They don't know what to believe anymore. There's so much lying going on. They don't know what to trust anymore. And we have all that within our grasp to tell them, you can trust Jesus Christ, the Lord. You can believe everything that He says He will do. And He'll take all fear away from you, from your life. He'll give you peace. It's time to get up. It's time to go. The invitation this morning is this. Come. If you haven't been doing what you've been doing, come. If you've got sin in your life, come. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, come. I'll be up in the front. Wayne comes and leads us. Again, Christian, come.